Next up on the agenda, we have the pull test for the clamps. Let's start with the five tooth version that I've set up already. You can see that I've clamped the test string only at the teeth area, which is the more critical scenario for the clamp, which simulates when uh, the clamp needs to hold the cross strings. The string used is a leaning number one, an 0.65 millimeter gauge string, which is a rather uh, fragile one when it comes to the connection between the outer layer and the inner structures of the string. So basically, um, when the clamps are not holding properly, or when the clamps are not at their best, um, this string is very likely to get damaged. So also a rather critical scenario when, when it comes to testing. We're going to start with a 30 pound setting. Constant pull is activated, no pre-stretch. And let's just see what happens. And you can see basically nothing. So the clamp is holding up really well. No movement, no slippage, whatever. Actually, that was to be expected for a clamp at that level. So let's spice things up a bit. Let's move on to 33 pounds. Again, the clamp is holding well. No slippage, nothing's happening. So, and now we're getting to uh, levels that are getting really interesting. So we now reach 35 pounds. which should be a value that should be closest to uh, what's currently uh, realistic to get actually on a racket. As you can see, it's still holding up well, 35 pounds. That's a clear check. And now we're moving on into the more unrealistic territory, but I really want to see where the, yeah, where the limit is for this, this clamp. 37 pounds. It's still holding up well, really impressive, no slippage, nothing. So now I want to see something happening, please. Um, now come on, let's go to 40 pounds. And this would be also the last test we're doing. And it's still holding. I, wow, that's, that's rather impressive. I really thought that this would be the limit, not that we would cross the limit, but still 40 pounds and it's holding up well. Well, I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to stop here because um, that's already beyond what is what is reasonable and what is realistic. So the setting I chose was um, to have the zero at the top and then two clicks over the 12 o'clock position, which in my opinion is a safe setting that the string doesn't get damaged too much. As you can see, yeah, it has some, some squeeze marks now, but basically um, because we've we've pulled like like hell on, the, on this one and it wasn't tightened before when I when I en entered it into the clamp. So um, this is a setting that I've used on several string jobs, realistic string jobs, and there were no uh, squeeze marks or whatever uh, visible on the string afterwards. So 40 pounds, we stopped. Rather impressive result, I would say. Let's move on to the four tooth version of it. I've already chose the same uh, setting uh, for the for the distance of the plates. Let's insert the string. Again, at the teeth area only. Like this. And we started at 30 pounds, so it's also fair for the four tooth version to start like this. Again, same setting, no pre-stretch. That's it, and there we go. 30 pounds as expected, no big deal at all. I think we can speed this up a bit. Let's go to 33 was the next. Also, nothing happening. Clamp is holding up well. We went on to a 35, which we will do also here. Even 35 pounds, this clamp is holding safe with the string. And let's remember this one is the four tooth version, so there is even less surface touching uh, the string to, to hold on to it. 
Now let's see also where the limit is. I think we went on to a 30, 37, 38, 38. Let's do it next. And I just expect that something must be happening at some point. I'm not sure if you have seen it on the video, um, but there was a certain movement inside the clamp when the both plates were slightly shifted against each other. So at least something seems to be happening inside the clamp that might be a signal that we are getting closer to the to the limit of what it can hold. Let's also move on to the 40 pounds and if it's still holding up well. I think I'm going to stop this. And that was it. Yep, that was the effect that I was expecting or hoping for at some point. It literally it, it snapped the string through right at the at the, the enter point or at the, the exit point depends on which which direction you see it so this one was over the limit at 40 pounds also you can see yeah you can see how much the string got got stripped and and the outer layer was moving and so i think with the 35 pounds 37 pounds when also the plates were start moving and now you can see what's what's happening because this that's the movement that i've seen so both plates were um yeah somehow shifted okay but still a uh, four tooth version four tooth clamp with so tiny um, teeth holding up like 37 pounds is rather impressive so i think um, everything above 30 35 pounds is still an unrealistic test scenario only yeah and that's it for the pull test i think and as we're now getting towards the end of the clip, it's time to make a short summary and to, to draw a, a conclusion. I've now been working with the machine for about three weeks. And from the beginning, the question for me was the biggest question, is the machine worth the money? Because hands down, 800 euros for a drop weight stringing machine is quite a lot of money. We don't need to, to discuss that, I think especially when you consider that in a range between 500 to 650 euro, there are quite a lot of machines on the market who have proven over the years to be reliable and uh, consistent machines. Uh, for example, the Super Stringer, let's say T20, T70 as the more um, higher end version, the Gamma X Stringer series, Gamma Progression series, um, the premium Stringer machines. So there are quite a, there's a bunch of machines on the market who who, um, that have proven to be uh, good machines, basically. Now there is the String Master coming to the market as the, the new guy in town, let's say, um, for about 300 euros more. And personally, I'm expecting something in return for these 300 euros extra. Personal conclusion, let's make this quick. I think, yes, it is worth the extra money. Let me tell you why. As soon as you start working with it, it's you, you immediately get the feel that every bit and piece that you touch, all the mechanics, the build quality, everything is that step or that league above what I know from the T20. So you immediately get the feel, oh, I have something more higher end in front of me and more premium in front of me. Um, I think personally the, the biggest advantage are those superbly designed clamp bases with a well thought out design with a big lever to, to push down, which creates such a natural workflow that you just lock the clamp, push down with the hand on the lever and the, the base is also locked. So it's really smooth and fluid. The design of the turntable is very streamlined, but I think um, nothing uh, that, that you don't know from other machines. So it's coming from uh, a machine with separately adjustable uh, side supports. It's missing those knobs and on the sides that constantly catch the string when you pull it through, which can be really annoying. So this is missing here, of course. Also, um, coming from the T20, um, it just has noticeably more, more room and more space to operate for your hands underneath the racket. When you, um, when you weave the cross strings, when you tie the knots, so it's a little less cramped at some points um, that you probably know from, that I know from the T20. 
So, um, the target, the objective of the Tennisman team with the String Master machine has been to offer possibly the highest level drop weight machines on the market regarding quality and features. And personally, I think they made an awesome job in, in achieving that because I don't know any other drop weight machine available around here that uh, can, can catch up with this, with the, with the features and also the build quality. So basically, that was my conclusion. If it's the right stringing machine for you, of course, that's, that's always on, on yourself to decide. So watch out for your budget. Watch out how seriously you want to take your stringing and then make a decision um, that you feel comfortable with. If you're looking for a high-end basis um, to maybe also build up uh, some upgrades on with a tension head or maybe if you already have a tension head at home from another machine and you want to just upgrade the base machine, I think this is a machine that is really worth looking at. And basically, that's it for me. If you have any question, comments, remark, whatever, feel free to enter them in the comment section or uh, click on the link um, that guides you towards the discussion thread in the Batman Central discussion forum regarding the machine and concerning the machine only. I hope you had some entertaining minutes and um, hope to see you next time again around. Thank you and bye bye.